Just because a car is fashionable doesn't mean it can't also be practical. For proof of that, Citroen brings us a revitalized version of their C3 Aircross small SUV. Square shaped but well rounded, this comfort focused and highly personalizable package is their idea of what a little SUV should be. What if you could have the style and adventurous feel of a small SUV combined with the interior space and flexibility of a small MPV people carrier? It's a combination of virtues that many brands have promised, but which possibly this car actually delivers. The Citroen C3 Aircross, which was revitalized and redesigned early in 2021 to create the model we're going to look at here. The French like practical, rational cars, which is why brands from this nation were the first to popularize the MPV, a most logical type of motor vehicle. They were early hatchback innovators too, appreciating their extra practicality and functionality, and amongst the last to embrace the contradictory charms of the modern, affordable family SUV. Why, they ask quite reasonably, would you want to take a super mini or family hatchback and in pursuit of some mythical lifestyle orientation, make it heavier, clunkier, less efficient and less practical, yet usually no more spacious or versatile? What though, if those downsides could be minimised and the SUV in question could offer all the interior versatility you used to find only in small super mini based people carriers? Well, that's always been the thinking behind this C3 Aircross, first launched in 2017, then four years on, refreshed with a new face, new tech and an easier to understand model range, creating the little crossover we have here. This, we're being reminded, is a car full of innovation. Before you get too excited, perhaps expecting an old school Citroen that follows the DS, GS and CX models of the 60s and 70s with groundbreaking drive systems and quirky suspension setups, we should set the record straight by making it clear that the technical innovations being offered here are rather less revolutionary, really just distinctions of the new era Citroen kind. Most of them cosmetic. Things like a bewilderingly large number of paint combinations, customizable exterior color inserts, a class leadingly large sunroof, and more usefully, modular rear seats that recline and slide. All this is the sort of thing the modern SUV crowd wants, and Citroen feels compelled to play to it. Understandably so, as it's a formula that's clearly worked. Over 340,000 C3 Aircross models having been sold since the original introduction. If you're familiar with the company's current model range, you can probably tell at a glance where the C3 Aircross fits in. It's a smaller brother to the company's C5 Aircross model, but where that family hatchback-based contender targets the likes of the Kia Sportage, Peugeot 3008 and Nissan Qashqai in the C segment part of the SUV segment, this smaller design has its sights set on super mini-based rivals like Nissan's Duke and Renault's Capture. You might, as we initially did, make the mistake of assuming this contender to be little more than a dressed up C3 Super Mini in a pair of hiking boots. But actually, there's a lot more to it than that. Not least the fact that this Aircross variant sits on a wheelbase that's 60 millimeters longer than a standard C3, which makes it significantly more spacious inside. In short, it's a small SUV with big ideas, especially in this revitalized form in which guys the car gains smarter looks, plump advanced comfort seats, upgraded interior technology and more advanced driving aids. Lots to talk about then. In Car and Driving's video review, the industry's most complete test. This improved C3 Aircross may have gained a bit of attitude, but inevitably it remains about as comfortable in the rough stuff as the average upper-class Parisian would be in a tent, which of course won't bother potential buyers one jot. 
Having heard that, he won't be the slightest bit surprised to learn that four-wheel drive isn't offered and never will be, though there is a more sensible alternative to all-wheel traction, which we'll get to in a minute. To start with though, let's focus on this car's core values, designed to suit the school run and commuter-orientated existence it will actually lead. One that will be very different from the surf shack life promised by the pretty pictures in the brochure. The issues you'll face as a C3 Aircross owner will of course be less about adventure and more about avoiding misadventure, hence a suite of up to 12 different driver assistance systems to keep you safe. And a 50mm increase in ride height over an ordinary C3 Super Mini, so as to better cruise across the potholes and tarmac tears of everyday urban life. It's on these kinds of roads that you'll appreciate a very Citroen-esque attribute that this car has been favoured with, very decent quality of ride. It's hardly magic carpet-like, but by the mediocre standards prevalent in the small SUV class, the damping balance chosen here is very good indeed. Speed humps and really deep holes can occasionally catch it out, but over most surfaces, the ride feels very smooth. Surprisingly so, really, given that there's nothing at all advanced about this car's old tech, PF1, PSA group platform and conventional suspension package. True, the setup chosen isn't as soft and absorbent as it would be in an ordinary C3, but that's a good thing in our book, as the extra firmness cuts down a bit on the body roll that car tends to be somewhat afflicted with at speed through the corners. You will still get plenty of pitching about if you start to really push on through the bends, much more than most rivals exhibit, which can give something of the feeling of the wheel of piloting a small boat rather than a small crossover. But at least there's plenty of grip, and it's usually pretty strong straightforward to place the nose of the car where you want it. The steering helps in that regard, the power assistance being a bit more progressive in its input than it is in that conventional C3 where it's basically just light all the time. Having said all that, the Aircross is, like its super mini stablemate, at its happiest in town. Not only because of the ride quality, but also thanks to a light, agile feel that's complemented by a tight 10.8 metre turning circle. Things aren't quite so good on the highway where there's a fair bit of wind and road noise. Thankfully, all versions get a tall sixth ratio, which means the engine isn't turning at a ridiculous speed when you're at or around the legal limit. Talking of engines, we should tell you a little bit more about them. And these days, it's basically only one. Citroen's usual 1.2 litre PureTech turbocharged petrol unit offered with 110 horsepower in manual form or with 130 as an EAT six-speed automatic. A manual only 1.5 litre blue HDI diesel model still resides in the price list but with only 4% of the sales mix forecast for this out of favour variant it'll be rarer than a Ferrari on our roads. Most customers tend to choose the petrol manual version and in one of those, once you've adjusted to the stick shift's annoyingly long throw and a rather vague feel, the 62 mile an hour sprint should be possible in 10.1 seconds on the way to a rather low sounding, rather EV-like 114 miles an hour, though that's actually quite as fast as you probably want to go in a car of this kind. For this 130 horsepower automatic PureTech variant, the figures are 9.2 seconds and 121 miles an hour. For completion, we'll also tell you that the 110 horsepower diesel models figures are 62 miles an hour in 10.8 seconds on route to 114, though it'll feel faster in the mid-range because of a 250 newton metre torque figure that's 45 newton metres more than that produced by the 110 horsepower petrol unit. Finally, we'll finish by briefing you on a feature we referenced at the beginning, the optional grip control package. It's a kind of anti-scrabble traction system for the front wheels that will keep you going on slippery surfaces without the need for the weight and complication of a full-blown 4x4 setup. It works through tweaking the ESP stability control system and via a rotary dial on the dash, provides specific selectable modes for snow and sand, plus an all-terrain setting for mud and a standard normal mode for low-grip tarmac. As part of the grip control option, you'll also get grippier all-season tyres and a hill descent assist feature which can ease the car down slippery slopes. It's a refreshing option to find in such a shallow, style conscious segment and all most buyers will ever need. A bit like the car itself. This car feels like it's up for a bit of fun, doesn't it? It's styling all jaunty bulges, contrasting colours and Tonka toy-like looks. Shy and retiring folk won't see the point, but the fashionistas should love it. 
This improved version looks a bit more purposeful than its predecessor, but it's pitched at the same segment, sized halfway between the Super Mini and family hatch sectors. An SUV sweet spot that every mainstream brand is fighting increasingly hard to compete in. In a crowded marketplace, it's not too hard to spot the C3 Aircross, primarily because it's defiantly square in a class full of swept-back, sportier-looking little crossovers. Nothing's changed in that regard, but the front end gains a more assertive look, with a higher set bonnet and the previous rather blocky square headlamps replaced by smaller, sleeker units that flow from the lower part of the double chevron grille. Further down, there's a much more overt front intake, underscored by this silver skid plate panel, which gains these inserts that can be customizably painted. Not much has changed here at the side, but there's plenty going on, particularly if you have a car embellished with one of the four different colours packs available, provided you avoid base trim. We've got the polar white pack here, which adds that colour to the roof and mirrors and to the framing of this rather curious signature profile styling flourish. This Venetian blind effect rear quarter light made from polycarbonate and layered with coloured film. You'd expect the colour customisable side air bumps you'd get on an ordinary C3 Super Mini to feature too, but for some reason Citroen doesn't think they suit models in the small SUV class. More familiar crossover cues are though present and correct. So there's roof rails and a higher ride height which here is 50 millimetres more than that with the ordinary C3 hatch. There's also chunky wheel arch cladding shrouding rims of either 16 inches or, as in this case, 17 inches in size. The rear styling is also pretty much as it was, so as before you get a pretty outspoken piece of pavement theatre, embellished with 3D rear lamp clusters and the in-your-face nature of this chunky rear bumper with its incorporated lower skid plate. The tailgate's topped off by a neat roof spoiler and a bee sting style aerial, while a smart two-tone C3 Aircross badge to the right of the tailgate, below two-tone Citroen chevrons, aims to complete the effect. As usual, what's more important is the stuff you can't see. In this case, the PF1 platform this car shares with a Vauxhall Crossland, a rival that rolls down the same production line as this Citroen in Zaragoza, Spain. So, rather wild and wacky outside, which makes you wonder what might await you in the cabin. Well, there's a lot going on, isn't there? What's new is this larger centre screen, and with the top spec trim level that most customers want, these unusual overstuffed advanced comfort seats. Now, as before, what you ultimately get with this car depends quite a lot on whether you've been able to stretch up to one of the pricier trim levels and therefore open up access to one of the three nicer interior design packs. Citroen calls them ambiences. We've got hype grey ambience here. Now beware, without this kind of embellishment, the cabin's really quite plain and dull. Jazzed up like this though, the Aircross interior comes alive. Just look at this fascia. Apparently held up with these silver pillars that support the centre stack and decorated with no fewer than four types of plastic finish. Grained, indented, dimpled and shiny piano black. Even without all this trimming tinsel, there are plenty of unique design touches to be found around a cabin that differentiates itself from that of a normal C3 by this wider, deeper, soft-touch fascia panel and quirky little upright air vents at either end of the dash. Plus, there are retro-style instrument dial graphics, a curiously stylized handbrake lever, a squarical, flat-bottomed steering wheel and even an indented reverse air bump theme on the door cards. It all attempts to continue the engaging demeanour established before you got in. To be honest, we'd have happily traded some of this feel-good frippery for a few established modern-era Citroen features of a bit more substance. For example, the neat fixed steering wheel centre panel of the Mark 1 C4 or the clever Zenith windscreen used on the old Mark 2 C3 model that extended the glasswork above your head into the roof section and offered a wonderful view forward that was especially helpful when you were stopped under a traffic light.
You don't get anything like that on Citroens in the company's current model range. Partly that's because the company thinks that genuinely innovative touches of fundamental design can be potentially divisive in the showroom. Fashionable touches you can add or take away are a much safer bet with browsing buyers. And partly it's because the designers have had to budget in an allowance for the extra multimedia solutions that current buyers now want. Specifically, this updated centre dash 9-inch colour touchscreen that's standard on the two upper trim levels. The previous 7-inch monitor continues with base trim and features clearer, more responsive graphics. As on other Citroen models, this display's purpose is to declutter the dashboard. But again, as on other Citroen models, it still goes too far by including ventilation controls and concealing them behind menus that can be awkward to instantly access when you're using the screen's other functions, which is annoying because there's a wasted center stack space for a proper set of physical climate controls next to the start-stop button. As for those other functions, well, the screen doesn't have too many tricks up its sleeve, but everything you need is here. The Citroen Connect nav package with 3D navigation, Apple CarPlay or Android Auto smartphone navigation, Wi-Fi connectivity and access to various apps. There's a reasonable quality DAB tuner too, but top spec buyers who think it's not good enough can embellish it with a hi-fi system upgrade. The next generation version of this model will have the kind of digital instrument display you'll already find in many class rivals, but Citroen hasn't got around to that yet in this segment, so this Aircross sticks with these curious silver-framed analog gauges. The Speedo one annoying in that it doesn't show odd-numbered miles per hour increments. These dials are separated by this rather old-fashioned looking 3.5 inch black and white central display. With top spec, you can upgrade it to a color readout, which incorporates a digital speedo and various items of selectable data. Use this scroll button on the left side of the steering wheel or press the end of the right hand indicator stalk and you can flick through trip computer info, an odometer, average speed and fuel consumption and your total start stop time. We mentioned the seats earlier, designed as part of the brand's advanced comfort programme, which makes them wider and more cushioned than is normal for a car of this price, something you'll appreciate on longer trips. It's a pity, though, that these chairs don't feature adjustable lumbar support. There's very little cornering side support either. Still, fiddle with the seat height and the reach and rake adjustable steering wheel, and you'll quickly find a comfortable perch. As for all-round visibility, well, your forward view is fine, thanks to the slightly higher seating position. But you can't see too much over your shoulder, thanks to the shallow rear screen and thick rear C-pillars. It's just as well, then, that rear parking sensors are standard, but you only get a rear parking camera with top-spec trim. On to issues of practicality. Well, we're irritated that, as usual on PSA Group products, half the glove box capacity is eaten up by the fuse box. Plus, this narrow tray just above isn't going to be of much use. You have to awkwardly reach back to access this covered box between the seats. And there's no dedicated overhead area to store your sunglasses. On the plus side, there are cup holders beside the conventional handbrake and just beyond a deep stowage area at the base of the centre stack with a 12 volt and a USB-A port. There are ticket clips in the sun visors and the door bins are big enough to take a 1.5 litre bottle of water if you were to lay it on its side. Build quality from the Spanish factory seems quite good, but you don't have to look far to find hard, easily scratchable plastics. The lower fascia panel above the glove box, for instance. Time to take a seat in the rear. Now, this Aircross model's 160 millimeter length increase over a standard C3 obviously helps things here. This used to be one of the longer models in the segment, but now it's one of the shorter ones. It is, however, taller than almost all competitors, and that's not the only thing that'll benefit rear seat occupants. Go for a top Shine Plus variant like this one and you get the flexibility of this sliding rear bench that features a 60-40 split and moves back and forth over a 150 millimetre range. It's a great feature to have on a car of this class, but it's really annoying that you can't have it on more affordable versions of this model, even as an option. 
The seat back reclines too for greater comfort on longer journeys. And another feature of note that requires an ample budget is this optional panoramic glass roof, which opens, has a powered blind, and occupying a glazed area of nearly one metre in length is supposed to be the largest in the segment. If you can't afford it, console yourself that it robs occupants back here of a few crucial inches of headroom. Otherwise, it's pretty much like any other small SUV back here. As in any compact car, three people will feel squashed, but there's plenty of room for two tall adults to sit behind a couple of equally lanky folk up front, with knee space helped by the soft front seat backs with their colour-themed pockets. Plus, there are neat roof-mounted reading lights, ISOFIX child seat fastenings and reasonably sized door bins. Even in this class of car, You'd expect a USB connectivity port in the back these days. This Citroen only gives you a 12-volt socket. And when was the last time you used one of those? Still, it's nice that top-spec trim gives you these side window blinds. If you've gone for a model with this sliding bench, you can fold down the middle of the back rest to access a couple of indented cup holders too. Last but not least, let's take a look at the boot. Now, raise the rear hatch when the back seat is set for maximum legroom, and there's 410 litres of capacity on offer. That's 110 litres more than you'd get in an ordinary C3, and more than you'd find in most supposedly larger golf size family hatchbacks. Citroen's similarly priced C4, for instance, which has a 380 litre boot. To give you some SUV B segment class perspective on this C3 Aircross model's cargo figure, we'll tell you that a Seat Arona offers 400 litres, a Nissan Juke will give you 422, and a Ford Puma has 456 litres. Those three rivals, though, like most others in this class, don't offer variants with the flexibility of this sliding rear bench. For that, in this segment, you'd need a Renault Capture, a Volkswagen T-Cross, or this car's Stellantis Group stablemate, the Vauxhall Crossland. In this case, as with that Vauxhall, if you're prepared to really compromise rear seat legroom and push the bench right forward, up to 520 litres of room can be freed up, which is potentially very useful, particularly if the rear seats are occupied only by smaller children. To help you make good use of the space on offer, there's this useful adjustable height boot floor panel. As with most setups of this type, the idea is that you can reposition it at a lower level if you've taller things to carry, say a garden centre plant, for instance. If it's in its normal higher position, it'll usefully conceal a lower space that could be used to shield more valuable items from prying eyes. And when not in use, you can slot it in front of the rear seat back. Beneath the lower boot floor, there's further space to carry the, unfortunately optional, space saver spare wheel. If you want to carry longer items like skis without disturbing a couple of rear seat occupants, you'll need to have chosen the top spec trim that gets you this sliding bench, because that's the only way you'll get this useful 40-20-40 seat back split. Otherwise, it's the usual less convenient 60-40 split arrangement. Push forward the entire rear seat and you'll reveal an almost flat loading floor with as much as 1,289 litres of total fresh air if you load it to the roof. Very few competitors can better that. Plus, if you go for this top Shine Plus model, you get a fold-flat front passenger seat that enables items of up to 2.4 metres in length to be accommodated. That means really long or bulky items can fit in with deceptive ease. Three IKEA Billy bookcases, for example. Again, this is a feature that used to be quite common among smaller cars, yet rarely found in small SUVs, giving the C3 Aircross a potentially strong selling point. Time to see what the C3 Aircross costs and what you get for the money. Now, the bottom line here is that this is one of the more affordable small SUVs you can choose, though it doesn't mean it's inexpensive. Whatever your model preference, expect your dealer to be able to offer particularly appealing monthly finance rates, which is perhaps a safer way into ownership because it insulates you from uncertain depreciation. A fact that's always difficult to judge with a fashion-led product of this sort. The revised C3 Aircross range is less exhaustive and more straightforward than before. There's no longer a version with a puny 82 horsepower, normally aspirated petrol engine. You've got to have a turbo unit of some kind now. 
probably Citroen's usual 110 horsepower pure tech petrol engine, which is all that's on offer with the base C series model, paired with a six speed manual gearbox and costing around £17,500 at the time of this test in December 2021. For a wider engine and transmission choice, it's necessary to venture further up the range. But that requires quite a price jump. Think around £2,600 more over C-Series trim if you're to graduate to mid-range Shine spec, which means you'll need a budget of at least £20,000. Still, that'll open up access to the optional trim and colour packages that you'll probably want. More on that in a moment. Bear in mind that you'll need to go still further to this top Shine Plus level of trim if you want one of this car's greater selling points, the sliding and reclining rear bench, which is one reason why over half of customers opt for this top spec variant, despite the fact that prices at this level start from around £21,500. We mentioned the wider engine and transmission choice available with Shine and Shine Plus trim. You can have the usual 110 horsepower petrol engine and manual gearbox package, of course, but you might prefer to find the extra £1,500 necessary to get a version of this car with Citroen's EAT6 auto transmission, a gearbox only available with a slightly gutsier 130 horsepower version of the PureTech petrol unit. And that's what we've got here. If you're happy to stay with a stick shift but want greater fuel economy, then with either of these two plusher trim levels, spending around £1,000 over the cost of the 110 horsepower petrol power plant will get you a C3 Aircross featuring the brand's trusty 1.5 litre blue HDI 110 HP engine, though only about 4% of customers are expected to opt for that. Forget hybrid, plug-in hybrid or pure electric variants. For the time being, Citroen prefers to leave that part of the market to its higher priced sister brands, DS and Persia. So the range of powertrains and trim levels has been reduced, but Citroen says there's still a large number of potential personalisation options available, with apparently up to 70 possible colour scheme combinations in total, depending on how you mix and match the various colour packs and interior ambiences. More on those in a moment. First, though, you're going to want some value perspective here, starting with how much extra it might cost to trade up from Citroen's ordinary C3 Super Mini into this SUV-style C3 Aircross model. That's difficult to definitely answer because the two cars have slightly different engine and trim lineups, but a top-spec C3 with a PureTech 110 engine would save you around £2,250 over a similarly engineered top-spec C3 Aircross which you might think is reasonable given the additional space, size and flexibility of this SUV model. You may be interested to know that C3 Aircross money would also get you the brand's focus-sized C4 hatch from the next class up, a car that would give you slightly more rear seat legroom but slightly less cargo space and style. Your choice. What we also need to do is give you a perspective on the value proposition that Citroen's pricing represents against similar models from other brands in the growing SUVB segment for super mini based crossover designs. The C3 Aircross shares its platform and indeed its Spanish factory with Vauxhall's Crossland, but one of those will cost you a couple of thousand more. Potentially more tempting are two other related Stellantis Group small SUVs, the Peugeot 2008 and the Vauxhall Mocha, which share their engines with this Citroen, but get a more modern platform to bolt them to, which partly explains why the 2008 and the Mocha cost so much more. Think around £22,000 upwards, but more like twenty-three to 26000 for a mid-level of spec. There's also another Stellantis Group offering in this class, the Fiat 500X, though it doesn't share any engineering with this C3 Aircross. 500X pricing is on a par with the Crossland. So as with the Vauxhall, think of needing another couple of thousand over what you pay for this Citroen if you want one of those. So this Aircross easily wins the value plaudits when it comes to related Stellantis models, but can it stand out as easily against other popular contenders in this segment? Well, we'll start with the two most successful class players, the Nissan Duke and the Renault Capture. 
The Nissan no longer undercuts this C3 Aircross with a starting price that's almost £2,000 greater and no diesel engine available. It's also significantly smaller than this Citroen inside. The Renault gets closer to this Aircross model's level of interior space but can't quite match it and it's in the region of £2,000 to £3,000 pricier whichever derivative you care to look at. The Capture's trump card, though, is its more advanced platform, which allows it to offer hybrid and plug-in hybrid powertrains. As for other rivals in this segment, well, it's hard to find any volume brand player in the class that can put a B-segment SUV on your driveway for around £17,500, as Citroen can with the entry-level C-series spec version of this C3 Aircross. Not even Skoda, whose Kamiq costs around £1,500 more with a feebler 95 PS engine. Give that Kamiq a comparable 110 PS petrol engine and you'll be looking at around £3,000 more than you'll need for the base version of this Citroen. That, Skoda's two identically engineered design cousins, the Seat Arona and the Volkswagen T-Cross, are slightly pricier still. Want to pay more in this class? Well, you certainly can. The cheapest Ford Puma costs about the same, about £23,000, as this most expensively trimmed Shine Plus spec C3 Aircross. Even Ford's ageing EcoSport costs from around £22,000, about the same as the Suzuki Vitara, though those are now heavily discounted. Models like Jeep's Renegade and Mazda CX-30 don't even start price-wise until you get over £23,000. And you need to be thinking £25,000 upwards for a representatively comparable Volkswagen T-Roc or Suzuki S-Cross. Which is not to say that the C3 Aircross is the cheapest car in its segment. Citroen probably wouldn't want it to be lumped in with the budget brands vying for that title. A Dacia Duster costs from around £14,000. A Sangyong Tivoli costs from around £14,500. And an MG ZS costs from around £16,000. A Kia Stonic sits just the other side of the C3 Aircross price starting point at around £19,000. If, having considered all of that, you conclude that it is a C3 Aircross that you really want, then a major selling point will be the colour personalisation options we referenced earlier. Predictably, you don't get much of that with the base C-series trim, though you can pay £300 extra at this level for a contrast-coloured roof. Otherwise, though, it's mid-range shine spec, where your options start to open up with the various colour packs which change the colour of the mirror covers, the front skid plate inserts and the graphic in the rear quarter panel window glass. One of these packs, the Perla Nera black one, comes as standard with shine spec. The others, anodised orange, anodised blue or, as in this case, polar white, cost £200 extra. And, as with base C-series trim, you can also pay more for a black or, as in this case, a white contrast coloured roof. With this top Shine Plus spec, you can have your pick of all the various colour packs and, if you want, also add in a black or a white contrast coloured roof at no extra charge. You got all that? Good. Aside from colour personalisation, you're going to need to know just how generous Citroen's been with the standard specification. So let's see. Well... Even the entry-level C-Series spec gets you features like eco LED headlights, roof rails, front fog lights, auto headlamps and wipers, rear parking sensors, an alarm, and a decent range of camera-driven safety features, which we'll cover off shortly. Now, some compensation for the lack of personalisation options at this most affordable point in the lineup comes with the standard inclusion of 16-inch X-Cross diamond-cut alloy wheels, tinted rear windows, 3D effect rear lights and C-series decals outside. Plus, there's a red-tinged graphite grey upholstery and trimming theme inside. Plus, you can tick off automatic air conditioning and a 7-inch central infotainment screen complete with a 6-speaker DAB stereo system, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring. As we said earlier, though, most potential customers will start their perusals from mid-range Shine spec. 
apart from the extra customization options you get. The main change here is the upgrade of the central infotainment screen to a larger 9-inch size. This brings with it 3D navigation and a three-year subscription to Citroen's package of connected services, which include real-time traffic and speed camera location updates. With Shine Spec, the interior gains a grey interior ambience pack with upgraded mica fabric upholstery. Plus, there's also chrome trim for the instrument cluster. The centre console gains a lid and the boot gets a flex load, pull out, adjustable height floor that makes it easier to load taller items. Otherwise, mainly what you're paying the extra for with Shine Trim is the starting point of a better exterior look with that Perla Nera black pack we mentioned before you start mixing and matching with colour packs and interior ambiences. That only leaves this top Shine Plus trim level to cover, which gets you that key C3 aircross feature, the sliding reclining rear seat, which includes a centre armrest and ski flap. Another almost as useful inclusion at this level is the folding front passenger seat that flattens to allow long items to be carried. Shine Plus spec also gains you larger 17-inch origami alloy wheels, keyless entry, side window shades and auto dimming rear view mirror, front parking sensors and a top rear vision reversing camera that will cost £250 extra on a mid-range Shine variant. With this Shine Plus level of trim, you also get a much nicer looking cabin, courtesy of what Citroen calls a Metropolitan Graphite Interior Ambience Pack, which is optional for Shine Spec customers. This gets you the plump, advanced comfort front seats, trimmed in Brasilia black leather effect and grey flecked fabric upholstery. These using a variety of textured foams, 15 millimetres thicker than standard to provide more comfort and support. At this level, the cabin also features a wrapped dashboard and a gloss black centre console. And all of this, along with satin chrome finishing for the air vent surrounds, steering wheel inserts and radio controls, bring some more luxurious air to the cabin. On to options. Now, if you're graduating into this car after familiarisation with an ordinary C3 Super Mini, you might be surprised to find that there are a couple of elements really characteristic to that car that you can't have on this one. The side-mounted air bump panels that also marked out Citroen's first contender in the compact SUV segment, the original C4 Cactus, are completely missing here. So too is what is probably the ordinary C3 model's most topical feature, the connected cam package, which gives you a GoPro-style dash cam camera for fun pictures and traffic footage. You'd have thought that little piece of technology would have been a perfect fit for this model. But let's focus on what you can have. Our favourite optional feature available providing you avoid base trim is Citroen's grip control system that for £300 more gives the driving front wheels extra traction in slippery conditions and includes hill descent assist. You'll be glad you ticked that box next winter. Move to mid-range shine trim and you'll be offered the option of a rear view parking camera and you can add in larger 17 inch wheels. Otherwise, the key options are restricted to this top spec Shine Plus trim. There's the absolutely huge opening panoramic glass roof we've been trying here, but that costs over £1,000 more. Or you might be more interested in the £500 sight and sound pack, which includes a colour head-up display, a 3.5-inch colour binnacle display and an upgraded audio system with subwoofer and amplifier. At this level, there's also an optional park assist pack, which combines a self-parking system that steers you into spaces with blind spot monitoring. With Shine Plus spec, you can also upgrade to the plushest of Citroen's interior packs, Hype Grey Ambience, which gets you our test cars, Mistral grey-green leather and black leather effect upholstery, plus front and rear floor mats. Whatever C3 Aircross variant you select, remember that you're going to need to pay extra for a Space Saver spare wheel. And if you want this Citroen to be painted in anything other than solid polar white, you'll need to pay more for either solid khaki grey or one of the various metallic colours. We've got Voltaic Blue here. 
On to safety. Now, you'd want autonomous braking and an e-call system to be standard on a car of this kind these days. Here, disappointingly, you only get both of these features if you avoid baseline trim. Autonomous braking is provided by Citroen's Active Safety Brake with forward collision alert setup, which allows you to adjust the distance at which it kicks in when approaching a vehicle or collision hazard ahead. The e-call feature is the Citroen Connect Box emergency and assistance system that will automatically alert the emergency services if you're involved in a collision and the airbags inflate. Avoid base trim and you also get intelligent beam headlights that dip their beams for you at night and driver attention warning which monitors your driving reactions for drowsiness. What you do get across the range is coffee break alert, which reminds you to take a break on long journeys after two hours at average speeds of over 40 miles an hour and lane departure warning. We also like the standard speed limit recognition feature that pictures speed signs as you pass and displays them on the dash. The recorded figures can then easily be set into the standard cruise control or speed limiter, meaning that, in theory at least, you need never be zapped by a speed camera ever again. Otherwise, the standard safety tally is pretty much as you would expect it to be on a modern small SUV. So, every C3 Aircross comes with twin front, side and curtain airbags, Isofix child seat mounts and hill start assist that stops the car from rolling backwards as you pull away on inclines. As we said earlier, with the optional park assist pack, you get blind spot monitoring. This system there to alert you if at speed you're about to dangerously pull out in front of another vehicle. Small SUVs can't be as efficient as the super minis they're based upon. Extra weight and bluffer aerodynamics put paid to that. And this C3 Aircross is no exception to that rule in terms of weight, tipping the scales at about 100 kilos more than an ordinary C3. That exacts a penalty of about 10% on the fuel and CO2 emissions figures you can expect, which is a premium that we expect most potential owners will be quite happy to pay in return for the extra fashionability of running a car of this kind. A brief perusal of this little aircross model's various curb weights left us concluding that it didn't actually weigh very much more than something like, say, an ordinary Ford Fiesta Super Mini. All of which pays off when it comes to the actual figures. The now entry-level turbocharged, 110 horsepower, 1.2 litre PureTech petrol power plant returns up to 51.5 mpg and 134 grams per kilometre, which, to give you some segment perspective, is pretty close to the class standard for fuel economy, but around 10 grams per kilometre or so off for emissions. For the more powerful 130 horsepower version of the engine with automatic transmission, what we're trying here, those figures drop by just over 5% to bests of 47.3 mpg and 140 grams per kilometre. There are no electrified powertrain options to improve the efficiency potential here, but if you're prepared to ignore the current environmental zeitgeist and choose the rare diesel variant, then you can expect bests of 67.2 mpg on the combined cycle and 123 grams per kilometre of CO2. There's no clever ecotech to help you improve things, just a gear efficiency indicator and the usual engine stop-start system, which has an instrument screen readout telling you how long it's been operational for in any given journey. Nevertheless, it should all still be enough to allow you to eke out a reasonably impressive range from the 45-litre fuel tank, around 510 miles from the 110 horsepower manual PureTech petrol version, around 470 from this 130 horsepower automatic PureTech petrol variant, and up to 670 miles from the blue HDI diesel. Both of these are now fairly elderly power plants, but in efficiency terms, they would continue to hold up well against the more modern engines offered by rivals. With the PureTech petrol unit, that's aided by relatively lightweight and particularly low mechanical losses due to friction. The blue HDI diesel, meanwhile, benefits from a three-step after-treatment system designed to better eliminate the four nasty pollutants that diesel units usually put out, namely unburnt hydrocarbons, carbon monoxide, nitrogen oxides and particulates. Enough on engine efficiency, what about other financial considerations? Well, 
Regular service intervals come around every 12,500 miles or 12 months, depending on whichever comes sooner. For many owners, this will mean a visit to a dealer once a year, and there are plenty of Citroen outlets to choose from, so you should never be too far from one. So that you can budget ahead, the French brand offers its Citroen maintenance scheme that lets you pay either a one-off fee or monthly instalments to cover the cost of the routine upkeep of your car for as long as three years and 35,000 miles. Every C3 Aircross comes with a three-year and 60,000-mile warranty. The first two years of that aren't subject to any mileage limits, but the third year, which is taken care of by your local dealer, is limited to 60,000 miles. That's pretty standard, though it lags behind the five-year unlimited mileage warranty of the Hyundai Kona and the seven years or 100,000-mile warranty of the Kia Stonic. There's also Europe-wide breakdown assistance included from you for the first year you own the car. Looking at the longer term, you also have a 12-year guarantee against rust and 36 months cover for any paintwork defects, though that doesn't include stone chips and other wear and tear damage. On to insurance, and we'll start with the Shine and Shine Plus variants, as they'll probably be the biggest sellers. Whether you opt for the 110 horsepower Pure Tech petrol unit or the blue HDI diesel engine, your car will sit in Insurance Group 15E, which is very class competitive. Opt for the more powerful 130 horsepower Pure Tech petrol power plant with its automatic gearbox, and the rating moves up to Group 17E. That same higher rating is applied to the base C series Pure Tech 110 horsepower manual model because it lacks the camera safety features you'll find further up in the range. If you're a company car driver, the benefiting kind rates range from 28% for a Shine version with the diesel engine to 32% for a Shine or Shine Plus with the automatic 130 horsepower petrol engine. Pretty much the expected level for cars in this segment. Lastly, whether you're leasing the C3 Aircross or buying it outright with your own hard-earned cash, you'll want to know what it's going to be worth when you come to move it on. That means looking at residual values, an area where this model performs much better than you might expect. Independent expert CAP reckon that after the usual industry standard three-year or 30,000-mile ownership period, your C3 Aircross will be worth around 48% of its original asking price, depending on the variant you select. After a three-year or 60,000-mile ownership period, it'll be worth around 39% of its original value. That's a very strong result for a Citroen. If the automotive market was sensible and rational, this would be a small MPV like the old C3 Picasso. And in many ways, it is just one with an SUV mindset. We like that combination, and there's no reason why potential buyers shouldn't too. The C3 Aircross might not be especially fun to drive, but few B-segment SUVs are. What actually matters is that it's fun to look at and it's fun to sit in, which also ought to make it fun to own. Yet at the same time, this model's pretty much as practical as the MPV it probably would have been a few years ago. Its other main attributes are distinctly Citroen ones. An impressive standard of ride for this class of car, a level of possible personalization far beyond what you'll be offered by competitor models in this class, lightweight and efficient engines, which together mean very competitive running costs, and upfront affordability, which could easily see you in a C3 Aircross at a substantial saving over comparable versions of key class rivals. Are there issues? Well, a few, but they're not really deal breakers. Some of the cabin fixtures and fittings don't feel quite as sturdy as we'd like them to be. And it's annoying that you can't have the near essential sliding rear bench unless you stretch right up to top spec trim. And the brand's insistence on incorporating the ventilation controls into menus on the infotainment screen is less than ideal. Otherwise, though, there's actually a lot to like here. When it all comes down to it, this is an appealing, distinctive and nicely equipped little SUV. Unlike most cars in this class, it actually feels better on the road than the Super Mini it's based on and offers an awful lot more than the ordinary C3 hatch in return for the reasonable premium in price being asked. It's Citroen's idea of what a small SUV of this kind should be, and that makes it a little different from your other choices in this class which might mean you'll end up liking this car a lot more than you thought you were going to. We did.